The content on this channel has been created for adults. If you're not at least 13 years of age or older, then please do not watch this content. Sorry, dude. Come back when you're 13. What's up guys? Alright, I've got the camera set the best I could. I wanted you guys to kind of see this little prep area because as the title of the video says, we are about to make homemade turkey sausage. And this is American style sausage. You know, I, I have yet to be able to find that kind of breakfast American style sausage things that we have back home in the States here. So you got to make your own. And uh, in my restaurant, I used to make it all the time on my menu and I had homemade American sausage so I had real proper sausage pieces, you know, and things like that and sausage and egg biscuits and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> and plus I love cooking, so there you go. But anyways, I'm going to teach you guys how to make homemade sausage, my re recipe and this is a turkey sausage. We're not using pork or anything like that. And so we're gonna get the party started right here. And then afterwards, in part two of this video series, we're gonna take said homemade sausage and we're going to make a homemade pizza using only a frying pan. Now some people, probably in the same predicament that I was in when I first moved here and realized I didn't have an oven here. There's no oven here. So, I figured out how to make it work just perfectly in a frying pan. But that's for later. Let's get into the sausage making. So first thing you're going to want to do, and it's really, really important, is you got to get your meat. Here's some meat I prepared earlier. <laughs> not, you know, it's just, it's not cooked or anything, but it's, you know, portioned off. Uh, I did use the other half of this meat for a couple of burgers I made, turkey burgers yesterday, which I was gonna do a video on, but I was so hungry, I couldn't be bothered. So this is about 250 uh, grams of turkey mince, ground turkey. Uh, I don't know how much that is in, in our pounds. I, I couldn't tell you. Uh, I could guess, but I could probably be wrong. I'd say 125, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so you're gonna take that, you've got your meat there, and what you're gonna do is, now, it's all about taste, season of taste, but there's some very important things that are a must when it comes to making this dish. These certain things that have to go into this dish. It's just a given for, uh, to give it that kind of sausagey taste. Certain things like sage. Gotta have a little bit of sage in there. You need to have, I like having a little bit of Italian herbs or oregano, uh, things like that. Um, you have to have, uh, well, you don't have to have, but you know, a little bit of uh, fennel seeds goes really well in there. And also chili flakes, very important. It really gives it that, that nice bite that you want. Um, a little bit of um, cheyenne pepper, of course. And also a little bit of celery salt is something else that I like putting in. But I'm going to tell you each of everything that I put in. And uh, just ignore this for now. This is a piece of sauce. Normally I like to make my piece of sauce homemade. We'll save that whole story for the piece of recipe that we're going to do. I wanted to create something that anyone can make at home nice and easy by using supermarket products. Because not everyone can take the time to make 
homemade sauce, which my sauce takes hours to make. There's wine and there's all kinds of stuff. Anyways, I digress back to this. Okay, so one of the little things that I like to put in my sausage, we're going to start out with a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. So we're just going to put a smidgen. Again, this is all really to taste, guys. Um, so just a little bit, not too much, but it's just enough just to say hello. So we're just going to put a little bit of that in there. And then we're going to put some Italian herbs. So you're going to take, again, this is all to taste, guys. This is all to taste. Really, you can make it as stronger, as, as mild as you want. But we're going to start with just a dash of Italian herbs in there. Maybe two dashes. Maybe we'll go three. Okay, so Italian herbs. And just so you don't get confused later, so you don't put the same thing in, just put all your spices. You guys see I love my spices. We'll put a little bit of cheyenne pepper. Again, be careful with this because it depends how hot you actually want it. You may not like the hotness, so just a little dash. Chili flakes, same thing. You may not want too much of that, but it does help make it pop. So you're going to put some of that in there. You're going to put that one. A little bit of celery salt. Just a dash. Not too much. Now, I also like to put either sea salt or a little Himalayan salt. Um, and I also like cracked black pepper. So we're going to put a little bit of that in as well. You don't want to do it because it will really bring the heat if you do. Um, we'll go with regular sea salt because we have the little celery salt already. Just a little bit, not too much. We don't want it to become too salty. Um, we're not putting any turmeric in there. But we are going to put a little bit of ginger, just a dash. Oh, ginger smells so good. So just a dash of ginger, guys. Not too much. You don't want to overdo it. Ginger it can be very overpowering. Uh, the sage, very important. A little bit of sage, again. Oh, that smells good. And the sage is what really gives the sausage its that sausage taste. Sage, I would say, is probably one of the most important ingredients to really give it that sausagey taste. Um, fennel seeds, I love these. I'll put a little bit of those in, just a little bit. Put that there. We're going to put a little bit of oregano. I love oregano as well. Oh, Smells so good. And we're going to put some thyme. Oh, another thing that smells absolutely amazing. All right, now once you've done all that, and I'm just going to make sure I've washed my hands well. Uh, I'm like, I'm very much a bit of a Clean free, gotta know, a bit pedantic about stuff like that ever since the pandemic. But I do wash all of my spices and things I get from the store these days, all the bottles, not the actual spice itself, but I do tend to wash every single thing that comes in unless I can change it and put in a different package. Um, so, but you know, when you're working with meats and things like turkey in particular, chicken, stuff like that. You really want to make sure that your hands are clean. And that should just be for any food in particular, but you know, particularly poultry items. Okay, so you're going to take your meat. Now that you got that, just go ahead and fold that over like that. So you've got that nice in the center. And then you're basically just going to kind of knead this all together. Just mix it all together with your fingers. Just get it nice and just mixed up nicely. Again, all those spices and things like that, you can really kind of put as much as you want. You can do a smidgen, which could be two or three shakes if you're only working with this, you know, amount of meat. Um, depending, obviously, you got to adjust for the amount of meat that you're initially working with. If you're doing half a pound or something, you're going to need more seasoning. But, you know, it's, it's really up to your taste because... You guys know we have sauce well maybe you don't know if you've never had american style sausages we've got some that are really really 
uh, hot and spicy kind of like, which I like, actually like the hot ones. Um, and then, you know, we'd make them into a patty. If you go to McDonald's, you get a sausage patty, you know, and a biscuit, you know, with egg or something. Or, you know, we use sausage for our grounded up, uh, you know, ground it up and use it as topping for pizza. Uh, if you're making Chicago deep dish, you might actually take this sausage and layer it on the bottom of your pizza. Because Chicago deep dish toppings are made kind of backwards. So your meat and everything is all those type of toppings are on the bottom. And then uh, your sauce is on the top. <laughs> but again, there's different variations. I have seen people make it differently, but generally speaking. All right, so that's mixed up really well. Now, you should have already had your <laughs> oven preheating, which I did not. So go ahead and make sure your oven is on a medium heat. Uh, don't go above, you know, that medium heat because you don't want it to burn. You don't want that to happen. And you just really do want to allow those beautiful seasonings you know those nice spices and things that you've put in here you want to let everything i said spices but you guys know what i mean um but you want you really want to let all of that just really just have its moment to just really saturate itself nicely and you do want to mix this up really well because you don't want just to have suddenly a chunk of the seasoning all in one place <laughs> uh that could be kind of a fail for you <laughs> so that's mixed up really good now i'm really happy with that you've got a really good consistency here and you can really smell those spices just doing their thing the seasoning is just here just working its magic now what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this in the pan but i'm going to try to put this in a nice flat patty form I want this to be flat as possible. It's going to help it cook a little bit easier. And when I go to crumble it later, it's going to make it also easier to do. And I'm not going to end up with super huge chunks. So I'm going to take that right here, put it in your frying pan. Again, should have been preheated, but it's okay. It will eventually heat up. <laughs> All right, so flatten that out. Kind of almost like, you know, you're... Uh, doing a bit of a smash burger kind of situation but uh, just flatten that out across your pan plus the thinner it is the quicker it will cook again turkey is one of those meats you do not want to be messing around with make sure it is cooked properly all the way through and uh, you will be happy you did okay that's going to work perfectly. Oh my gosh, that smells absolutely amazing. All right, I'm going to wash my hands now that I've just got all that raw turkey meat on my hands. You definitely want to make sure you do that. You don't want to get it on something else and you don't realize it and then some type of bacteria or something starts growing. You don't want that. All right, we're going to take this as well and get this out the way. We'll watch that later. Alright, we're just going to let that cook now. That's really all we can do right now is let it cook. And uh, generally speaking, if your frying pan is already heated up, it should really take only about 10 minutes total. Um, 15 tops, uh, both sides, you know, flipping them, you know, once. If you do it right, you only have to flip it once. You don't need to over flip. Some people like to flip and you flip flop too much. You can usually tell when it's the right time to flip by if the top of the meat that you're cooking, you can start seeing that side, the top part is starting to look like it's changing from pink to like a kind of a brownish light tan kind of you know beige color you can tell you know what cooked meat looks like <laughs> so anyways we're gonna let that simmer and uh yeah i'll uh talk to you guys in a bit after that's cooked all right guys so as you can see this is what i meant by how you can tell when it needs to be flipped 
If you look at that, you can see that it is no longer pink for the most part across all of it. That's how you know it's time to flip. And uh, what you're going to do, obviously you can do the cool flip with the frying pan trick, which can work in your favor and can also be a fail sometimes. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use a spatula. And you're just going to want to just get, this is by the way my smash spatula that I was telling you about for my smash burgers. Woo! Yeah, this one been in many of my restaurants and it's always been my best friend I take it everywhere all right anyways you're gonna let that cook up on this side now and you should be able to start smelling the amazing aroma of your sausage just uh, filling up your room if you did it properly if you don't smell anything you didn't add enough <laughs> so I'll check in in a sec all right guys your meat is now done basically now if you were going to be making uh, a sausage and egg biscuit or something like that you would just easily take this and split it into fours something like that and boom there you go you've got four patties ready to go but we're making this for our pizza which is going to be sausage and pepperoni two of my favorite things and uh, it's gonna be freaking awesome so we're going to go ahead and just chop this up using our spatulas we're just gonna go like this straight across like this and you're just gonna go all the way across with each of those now you can also hand crumble this and let it cool down and uh, do it that way and that works as well you can obviously do that, but for me, I just uh, I like doing it this way. It's just as easy. And I don't have to wait for the meat to cool down or me potentially burn my freaking fingers from trying to <laughs> hurry and crumble it while it's still too hot. All right, so that's just about done. About chump it all up in nice little pieces. And size wise, it's really up to you what size you go with. Again, it's more of a preference thing. But there you go. Look at that. It's that easy. And now you've got all your little pieces for your pizza. And there you go. Now, what we're going to do, uh, I'm, not, I'm going to end this video here but before we do that I'm going to obviously taste a little bit to make sure it's on the money and just these beautiful smells that are coming from the kitchen right now I already know it is on point uh, but I'm going to go ahead and taste a little bit of this got a nice little chunk there that looks like that will work and uh, yeah there you go that's all ready to go that easy guys that easy and now you've got turkey sausage okay so I also want to say guys really important is you don't want to overcook turkey turkey can be overcooked when you overcook it it becomes very rubbery like and it is not a party it doesn't taste that great Plus it can also dry out and become too dry. So very important not to overcook this. All right, now if this is, uh, we're gonna go and taste this and then we're going to end this video, but then we'll be in part two and uh, we'll be making the pizza and we will be having a piece of mukbang. I'm gonna show you how we make it in the frying pan right here. And then we're going to eat it, have a mukbang. But until then, I'll catch you later. I didn't get to, really show my face in this video here i am i love you guys as always remember we joined to the fullest keep it off chat i'll catch you next one ha <laughs> psych just joking i have to taste this and let you know so we're just going to taste a little piece here oh my god that's good mmm of course it is right that is good that is good sausage okay now I've got a problem. I'm gonna to wanna to keep eating a bunch of it. 
Oh my gosh. Woo! Perfect. All right, now we're done. In case I don't want to freaking fall and drop everything on film, that just sucks. Alright, guys, we're going to do a little mission right now. Alright, this is just for you guys. We gotta get out of here! <laughs> Get out of here! I'll catch you guys later for another vlog!